We are live. live. Look at that. Look. Hey, welcome everybody. Hey, you got your prayer list there in front of you. We've got a lot to share tonight, so um, kind of jump in here. And I'll share with you some things I know and uh, try, try to give you the best uh, that, I, that I can see, okay, or some of these. Hey, Carl Derricott's having a heart procedure. They're going to end up having to do heart surgery on Carl. So he's in uh, UAB, I think, in the morning having that done, so please pray for him. Um, David and Lisa Hamlin, Miss Lisa is having a lot of hip problems. If you've seen her, uh, they've already, I mean, it happened quick. She's going to have hip replacement or hip surgery. Holly Jackson, do y'all know Miss Holly? Um, I don't know what's going on. She just called the church the other day, really concerned, and said, please pray for her. And so uh, she's going to have to have, she has some serious health issues. I, I, I texted her, but I hadn't got anything back. So. Was it for her or for Felicia? Her. her yeah. That's what she told us, so. Uh, I had anything. Felicia, everything okay with Felicia? Felicia was in the hospital. Uh, well, I didn't know that. Yes, uh, and Holly's the one that called Carrie. That's the reason I asked you. I'm sorry. Mm. I... No, that's good. I, may, I don't know. She talked to the girls and just said she had some some severe health issues. We're to find out. Uh, Donna Johnson had surgery on Monday. She's home recovering good. Amy Lyles, um, please pray for her. She's got kidney. She's had a lot of kidney issues in her life. Uh, Debbie Martin has has had ongoing issues on and off for just a long time. Maurice McGill is having treatments three times a week, so please pray for him and uh, ask the Lord to, to please just be with him. Hey, Betty Hanson. And uh, Philip Peck, I, I've just shared he lives by himself. Philip uh, used to do all of our spraying here, just, just has a lot of issues, and so he has cancer. They did a port, so they're having to do that. So please pray for him. For them and ask the Lord to bless them, okay? Uh, just some, a lot of stuff going on there. Any other church family? I know we've got a lot of friends, but any church family? <coughs> any church family? Keep praying for Judy. Judy Sapp, recovering. Um, on the bottom down here, let me let me share several of these with you. Um, Olin and Mary Hamlin, that's David Hamlin's mom. Her His mom's just, <coughs> it, just real poor health. They're 90 ish. So just a lot of issues there. Uh, Steve Hammond, this Dave Hammond's brother, also lives in Georgia. He's got a lot of issues, a lot. He's had a lot. Um, young girl used to go here, Angela Roach. She still works with the RAs a lot. Her mother, Brenda, uh, was diagnosed with lung cancer yesterday and just had a real bad moment there. So please pray for her and uh, ask the Lord to be. Hey, Miss Nancy. Hey, Mary Ann Blazer. So pray for, uh, for Brenda. I mean, well, Brenda, but Angela is the caretaker kind of. And just a lot of needs there. Um, the sixth grader at Lexington, I've still not heard any updates yet. Waiting to hear exactly what's going on there. Uh, Deborah Joyner asked us to pray for Louis Stovall. Steve Wall is a preacher friend of mine. He's been here with Servants Alive several times. Uh, about three years ago, two years ago, Steve, I don't know if he had a heart attack. He just lost all the pressure on the backside of his heart. Got down to about 5%. I thought he was going to die. He ended up having to do surgery. Uh, kept him alive, kept him going, but <clears throat> now he's having a lot of issues with his heart racing. The other day with the doctor's heart was pumping about 220 beats a minute. And if you know anything about that, that's stroke level. So they're going to have to go in and do what's called an ablation. So, he, again, his heart's already very weak. He still has never, I don't think he's got, ever got back up over 35% of his heart. So he, he just, a uh, lot of concerns. He's a great guy. Barbara Austin's niece, Yumi Whitaker. Uh, blood infection, she's in Indianapolis Hospital and asking to pray for them, okay? Any other friends we need to know about? We have several who've lost loved ones. I'll mention those, but any others? Anybody else? Hey, guys, if you're watching on Facebook, if you'll type in a name, uh, I can read who's watching. If you'll type it in real quick, I'll be happy to share the name of somebody. If you know anybody that we need to be praying for, we'd be glad to do that, okay? So do that if you want to. Uh, let's pray for our homebound, Betty Hanson, Stella Jones, James Thornton, Arnita Briley, Bonnie Bump, and then May Jean Hughes. May Jean is still uh, trying to get acclimated to living in, in, in this where she's at. She's doing better, but, but that's, you know, they got her house up for sale. That's just really got her kind of tore up. So that's a hard time in life when you've been, I mean, May Jean's been so independent, so strong, and then to have to just lose everything, and, and, and it's just Pretty heartbreaking, and uh, she's just a, such a sweet spirit. But uh, it just it just plays with your mind. 
So please pr pray for all of them, okay? All right? Hey, Joan Hammond, we're praying for you, lady. Hope you're doing well. Hey, here's some just some sad news. Most of you have heard some of these. Um, Stanley Boyd has been visiting, and his brother, I'm sorry, excuse me, James Boyd has been visiting from killing his brother Stanley passed away. I don't know them. Uh, I, I don't know Stanley. I know James. So I spoke to James's wife today. So uh, very unexpected. He's 67 years old. She said it was just absolutely out of the blue. So they're, they're naturally upset. I'm sure you've all heard about the principal at, at Rogers High School, 45 years old. Uh, he actually went to work that day. That, this is what I understand. I hope I'm not wrong. But got feeling real bad. Ended up having called an ambulance. Got in the hospital. Air lifted him. And then he, he passed away quickly. So please pray for the Burks family. Um, Kathy Rogers and Rihanna Bacon's cousin, Jim Kukendall, I think how you said Kirkendall. So pray for the Kirkendall family that, that uh, the Lord will give them grace. Uh, Lisa McCain's father-in-law, Gwen McCain. Uh, pray for them. Ask the Lord to please be with the McCain family. And then um, I'm sure most of you have got that. Uh, pray for Rhonda's mother-in-law. We'll do that. Bypass surgery tomorrow in Tupelo, Mississippi. We'll do that. Honda's mother-in-law. We got it. Thank you. Um, have all of y'all heard the situation with Mike Baum? Um, Mike had an aneurysm about seven years ago, massive aneurysm. We didn't ever think he would be himself again. Well, he, somehow, by the grace of God, uh, Mike is one of the finest men that ever walked this earth. He pulled out of that and, and got a lot of life back. Uh, but he had to quit work and everything. So to pass time, he would go, he lives on the river. He would go down and take his little boat and pull uh, logs off the river just to clean. That's just the kind of guy he is. Just, so he, when he didn't have anything to do, he'd just go pull logs off the river. So anyhow, um, pray for uh, Mary Coates Hyde's brother-in-law, Mickey Hyde. Got you, Miss Mary. Thank you. Fighting cancer. Praying for y'all. And said, evidently, uh, his wife, Connie, said he had started having real severe dizzy spells. Well, he was down at the river and evidently leaned over or something. They're thinking he had a heart attack because there was no water in the lungs. But he fell in the river, and, and again, we, they think maybe that he was already dead, so not sure. Kimberly Diane, please pray for her, Mrs. Betty. She's in a lot of pain. Done. Um, so sad story is his son, Mike Jr., had come to the house to visit got there nobody was inside was leaving the wife pulled up and said hey where's dad and he said well he's in the house and said no he's not i was in there so they found him in the river mm -hmm. and mike had to pull him out and then it took for some reason took about an hour and a half for them to come get him so they had to sit there with him for about an hour and a half it, it just got bad I, I don't know what happened there nobody's blaming but just it just wasn't good so anyhow so they're very sick that funeral will be friday at highland park not Highland, Highland Park over in Muscle Shoals. Uh, they're expecting, uh, Mike was just loved uh, all over this town. I, I'm just telling you, everywhere you go, they call him the rookie, everywhere you go. So they're expecting a massive crowd. Uh, I think it'll be 11 to 2, funeral will be at 2 on Friday over at Highland Park, okay? So please pray for them, uh, Mike Jr., sister, Connie, just the whole family. So ask the Lord to be with them. Sweetest guy I think I've ever just met in my life. Just a jewel. The real deal. So we're going to miss them. So the Lord be with, with, with all these families, okay? Hey, pray for our, we pray for our shut-ins. Let's be sure to pray for our missionaries and our military people as they work and serve. Uh, many of you, how many of y'all got to see Brother Eric? Y'all got to, he's in the back, I think tonight. Is he back there? I believe I saw him. Yeah, so he's here for, uh, they had to come in and close the house out. They had to come in and buy a car, several things like that, some medical things to get up. Um, he said that they, they are full for the rest of the summer. They, they were planning on coming back in September. He said, so they just moved it up. So they, they have a busy summer ahead of them with people coming in and working and doing that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, Eugene Tunnel. Hey, Mr. Eugene, pray for Sandy Merckx. We'll do it. Next door neighbor hurt. Uh, so pray for all of them. So pray for our military. Pray for all of the missionaries as they serve in their respective areas. Um, I, I don't know if you've been listening to India, what's going on in India. Uh, I don't have any oxygen, and people are dying in the streets. Um, they actually take them to the hospital. The hospital tells them to leave. 
and many of them are dying on the way home. It's sick, dying in the streets, and they're I don't want to be. T they're actually just burning them. They take them out to a field and show today 22 fires. Uh, they don't. They don't have time to bury them. They just take them out in the field. And and what's sad is one family member will be standing there, and that they'll be anyhow. So anyhow, so pray for all of the uh, the work around the world, and, and especially times like that, that the Lord would be gracious to these people. Our military. Hey, pray for our medical personnel. Man, they're still in there battling. Uh, thank God we're doing good here. We're doing better. The numbers are good, it looks like. But uh, still, stuff is out there. So please pray for all these uh, men and women who are having to deal with all this stuff and ask God to give them grace and mercy during all this time, okay? Got a lot of people passed away, so remember them, okay? Uh, <clears throat> remind the youth, is it the great getaway this Saturday? Is it, this, is it coming up? So remind all the youth parents out there, if you're listening, uh, they, you still have time to register. Hope you will get that done. They'll have the great escape or something, the great race, something like that. So it's fun. They eat baked beans or swim in them, or I, I'm not going. So I'll just pray Fish for them. Fish, yeah, I ain't going. Yeah, man, I've heard about it. It's bad. Eat crickets. Well, anyhow, so I'm, I'm out. I remember the last lock-in I went to, I carried my gun. God's not going to lock me up with a bunch of kids and tell me to have prayer. No. Um, they're having a big movie tonight. Hey, uh, pray for them. The movie's pretty serious. It, it, uh, last time we had some issues. Uh, and so, um, but you don't know until they see stuff like this. And so pray. Uh, we have counselors kind of on standby. Uh, so pray that everything tonight will go good. And we won't. Uh, guys, I'm telling y'all, all these kids walk around church smiling. They go home. I promise you right now in the church we have some girls being molested. I promise you we have some cutters in the church right now. I promise you. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Several where. And we do physical, physical yes. sexual, uh, emotional abuse. I'm, I'm just letting them know. Yes. Uh, most of them, uh, they're too ashamed to say anything. They, some of them. Some of them are scared. There's not that one. Some of them just ashamed. They just don't want anybody to know they're going to That And that, you said it right there. They think, hey, what, where am I going to go? I'm stuck. They, they really do. Um, and God, it's just, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, boy, I hate it when you see the innocent. People can't protect themselves to do that. So pray for Charlie Lawson. We'll do that. Hey, Miss Peden, I haven't seen you in a while. Good to have you on there, girl. We'll pray for Charlie Lawson. Charlie had to have surgery. So we'll sure do that, sis. Good to see you, Mary Jo. So pray for these kids. Uh, and, and reason they're showing, so if there is a problem, maybe we can address it. Uh, I mean, you know that, that Leah... Uh, Owens is a certified counselor with Children Baptist Home. We got our own here, so we got several people ready. Unspoken. Yes, unspoken. Anybody else? Last week we had two unspoken, so. All right. Uh, summertime's here, y'all. A lot of plans already are already kind of coming down the pathway. Uh, Bible school is a go. We'll be doing Bible school the last weekend of June. So, got a lot going on. So, we're really starting to crank it out. I appreciate all the hard work. Uh, Sunday on campus, we had 300 people. It just got crazy. I don't know what happened. Everybody decided to come, but we had 50, 60 back here. And, and thank God for that. Amen. But that's a lot of work. So uh, I, I'm just thankful that, uh, that and Rihanna does a great job with these kids. She is ready, prepared. Sunday night, uh, y'all, this is terrible. I told my, uh, my grandson I was going to get up on the top, and I had a, uh, I had a BB gun. I said, I'm going to wear you out, boy. You ain't going to know. Anyhow, I had him scared to death. So uh, anyhow, you got to have fun with them. Amen. So, uh, thank God for what they're doing back there and the good work. And we still need work in uh, nursery. If you would preschool, if you'd like to help us with that, okay? We trust the Lord, all right? Hey, if you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation 12. I'm gonna, um, y'all know we're in the middle of Revelation, so I, I just want to kind of um, just say some, some things to clarify uh, because, man, we're talking about the Euphrates River drying up and Sunday. My wife said, good night of living. Could you have been more depressing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was her. Some, I don't, well, it wasn't my wife. Somebody did. Anyhow, just, man. And I said, I know, but, but it's in there, so we need to know the whole council. Uh, by the way, David Jeremiah, uh, one of, uh, he, he's one of the most respected pulpits in America. He dealt with all this, and, and so uh, I'm doing the same. But I, I really want to bring it down, and I'm not dumbing it down, but I just want to bring it to a level where we understand about the second coming, some things going on there, and hopefully... Some, some things that we can just think about. So if Sunday was a little heavy for you, I understand. 
But tonight, I just want to talk about His coming out of Revelation 22. So I want to do some reading, if I can. I want to show you how many times He talked about it in Revelation 22. Now, this is the last book of the Bible. So look in verse 7. Jesus said, Behold, I'm coming. Would y'all say that word? Quickly. Quickly, suddenly. That literally means suddenly without delay. Underlay, underlay. Uh, fast. Blessed he who keeps the words. Verse 12. Behold, I'm coming quickly. And my reward's with me to give to everyone according to the work of the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But I want you to look in verse 20. And I want to take these four or five words here. And, and I just want to talk a little while about the coming of the Lord, okay? L listen to this. He who testifies to these things say, now listen to me. This is the last book, the last verses of the whole Bible. So what would you say if you were the Lord? Last book, last verse. Here's what he said. Surely I am coming. Would you say it one more time? Quickly. Quickly. Man, closing out the whole book of the Revelation. Amen. And then John responded and said, even so come. Lord Jesus. So tonight, we just want to go through here and we want to deal with this thing about His coming. Uh, and I just want to make it very practical so that you and I can put it kind of on that shelf where we can just kind of look at some things. The church and Christians, would you turn to Romans 8.22? I want to show you something here. What the church and Christians are waiting for the Lord to do. Uh, and I want you to see this. I really do. This, this is good. Uh, Romans 8 is one of the greatest chapters in all the Bible. We know that. Uh, it's akin to the Garden of Eden. It's right there next to Ephesians chapter 2. It's one of those phenomenal books. But, but he talks about, in verse 1, how that there's no condemnation. You remember he said there's no tribulation, no temptation taking you. But in verse 18, he opens up a door about the world that you and I live in today. Now, let's just be honest, ladies and gentlemen. We live in a pretty rough world. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uncommon. Hey, we live in the pathway of the, the, the helicopter that leaves North America, North America, North Alabama, and it's uncommon here. But if you go down to, to, to uh, UAB, almost every hour, helicopter lands. Every hour, helicopter. The day that we went to see our son, Joshua, and uh, we got there and we, we were just, man, couldn't wait to see him, five-hour surgery, tore his ear off, blah, 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 all that. Y'all heard all that. And we're standing there, and we're on the, I think it's the eighth floor where the NICU is. I believe it is. And there's this big window, and right across is the heliport where the helicopter lands. So we're waiting, man. We just can't wait. And sure enough, here comes the helicopter, and they open the door, and a little baby about that big. And get this, nobody's with it. No mama, no daddy can't. Just those medical personnel, they whip, you know, they take it. And I thought, man, here's my 30-something-year-old son in there, and, and yet... There's a little baby fighting for their life. So listen to what Paul said. These are some good words. Verse 18. Paul was a southerner, by the way, for I reckon. <laughs> if you got the old King James, uh, he's from South Mississippi, I guess. For I reckon. Uh, the new King James, for I consider. Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time, now listen to what he says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Um, engineers, and, I, and I'm not one, everybody said amen, all right? They use a thing called comparative analysis. And so when they're working out issues and stuff, they do a, they do a test that's called a comparative analysis. If you do this, what's going to happen? Well, here's what it said. If you compare now and you analyze what we're going to go through, he said what we're going to enjoy is so far greater than what we're having to go through, it's not even comparable. I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory. He said, when you get to heaven, and, and I, I don't want to be too graphic, but the illustration is a woman having a baby. I don't want to have a baby. Thank God for women. Amen. But they tell me, as soon as y'all have the babies, you're okay. Now, I don't believe that. <laughs> but but uh, all that you went through, you would say, hey, was it worth it, ladies? Yes. Yes. Immediately. Yes. You smile, you laugh, yet you just almost died. Not me, you on your own, buddy. <laughs> you ain't getting here. Um, and, and so he's comparing this thing that the sufferings that you go through. And, and, and notice this, he did say sufferings, right? You are going to suffer. There will be sufferings. But look what he says. For the earnest expectation, and then this, what's the earnest expectation? That's the coming of the Lord. Of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to the futility, not willing, 
but because of him who subjected it in hope. Man, he's saying a lot of hard stuff here to get to a point. Look at it. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Now, I'll read that again. For the creation itself, who's he talking about? You and me. For the creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. He's talking about another day. Back to verse 18. The glory that's going to be revealed in us. So all the suffering you're doing down here, all the heartache you're going through, all the pain, you can't even pick a blueberry without worrying about snakes. Or ticks. <laughs> Man, them nasty little things. Yeah, chiggers. Good. Not living. Bed bugs. And you think, man, I just want to... Eat a blueberry, but you got to go out there and worry about bears and snakes and, or, you know, whatever. And, and I just want a blueberry. But that's the world we live in, right? Yes. Huh? Takes a lot to suffer. Suffer. Chicks don't. Now, verse 22, he, he, he tells us something. We're going to fill in the, the church and Christians are waiting for what? Here it is. But we know that the whole creation groans. And girls, here's what I got the illustration. And labors with birth pains together until now. What, 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 are, what are we giving birth to or what are we waiting for? What are we groaning for? Here it is. Not only, but we also have the first fruits. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting. Here it is. For the redemption of the body. See, he redeemed your spirit, but he hadn't redeemed your body. So let's go up to that first line. The church and Christians are waiting for what? The redemption of the body. The redemption of the body. Um, I, I, we're adults in here. I read this little cute thing the other day, and most of you can understand this. The guy said, I was reading on Facebook the other morning about people climbing mountains and doing decathlons. He said, I was trying to put my underwear on one leg at a time without falling. <laughs> Bouncing around. You ever done that? Try to put your britches on? Can't get? Yeah. He said, man, here's people climbing mountains. I'm just trying to get my britches and my socks on. I'm dying. Well, the Bible says we're groaning. We're laboring. For what? The redemption of the body. God's going to redeem your body. So, Let's go back to Revelation 22 now. So he says here three times, Behold, I'm coming quickly. Now, it is a fact that a lot of the New Testament writers thought the Lord was coming back in their lifetime. And so that's why they kept saying this suddenly without delay idea. Okay? But he uses these words. Number one, look at the word surely. The word surely there implies a promise. Number one, the promise of his coming. Do you see that? He implies a promise. Surely. Um, as you, uh, matter of fact, uh, I was thinking about this on the way to church night. You know the book, the Bible, is more of a book of promises than it is commandments. Did you know that? The Bible is more about God's promises, the benefits of being saved. And so when th this thing about the redemption of the body, Jesus said, I promise you, I'm coming back. Matter of fact, in one place, in one translation, said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. So he gave them a personal promise. I am coming back. <clears throat> Three things about this promise. Number one, it's biblical. It's biblical. Number eight, it is biblical. When I stand up and preach the second coming, it's biblical. Y'all please hear that. It's biblical. I didn't make it up. Some preacher didn't make it up. The Lord himself spoke about his coming. Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, over and over. The Lord said, I'm coming, I'm coming. Three times alone in, Mac, in, in Revelation 22, he said, I am coming back quickly. God gave you and he gave me, and number two is this, a personal promise. It's personal. You can take it personal. Um, I'm, I'm going to be real careful here. Many of you know that we're keeping not a five-year-old, and um, he's beginning to realize he's missing his mama. And that, that's getting hard. Mama calls, and today we, they FaceTimed. And he's a little boy. He just wants to see his mama. Um, and she said, don't worry. I'm, one day when, when all this is, I'm coming. You know, and he said, when you coming? Uh, well, that's, that's hard. Jesus said, guys, I know it's hard. Romans 8, I know you're groaning. I know you're laboring. I mean, and that word labor there doesn't just mean I'm picking up stuff. I mean, it's hard. He said, but I I'm going to give you a personal promise. I'm coming back. Um, so, brother, I've been 2,000 years. Remember, God doesn't operate on time like us. All right? Uh, when that time's right, it'll be there. Uh, matter of fact, Brother Ron, why do you call it personal? Did you know the Bible refers to you in three ways? At least three. Number one, he refers to you as his bride. The groom will come get his bride. Um, 
I'll never forget my wedding day, August the 18th, 1979. Yes, I know it. Judy Lynn Jones. <clears throat> and I, her pastor married us. His name was Dr. Ivo Livingston. He's so intimidating. He's about 5'8", black hair, and he slicked it back. Don't, you know, I'm losing mine. I'm trying to figure out. But he had the grease and black horn rim glasses. Dr. Ivo, I mean, like he walked right out of a biochemistry class. And, and boy, just he just intimidated me, you know, just... And, and I hadn't been around him a whole lot, to be honest with you. They lived in Montgomery. And we're getting, we're getting married at East Mont Baptist Church. If you ever get on <clears throat> uh, the Eastern Bypass, it's that big Baptist, I mean, huge. I, I mean, I, I mean pro- thing of them probably set a thousand people. That's back in 1979. It's huge. And so we're getting ready to walk out, and they have a little thing like that in the door. So I'm standing here, and he's standing here, and he looked up. He said, Ronnie? I said, yeah, Dr. Livings. He said, if he's going to run, run now. I said, I didn't know I had an option. <laughs> Judy Lynn. Uh, he, now, he was a, I didn't know he was a big picker. He was a big, he said, if you're going to run, run now. Because once we go out there, you're staying. That, that was so good. Uh, you know, the Bible refers to you as the bride and the groom. The groom will come first bride. Number two, I, I really like this. The Bible refers to you as his beloved. The beloved of God. You're the bride, but you're the beloved. And, and we all know that he calls us brethren. The brethren. So it's personal. It's biblical because it's spoken of in the Bible, but it's personal because he said personally, you're my bride, you're my beloved, you're the brethren. I'm coming back. Hey, I also want to say this, and I, I think I read a little bit this Sunday. I'm not for sure. I, I tried to go back today. I, I, I couldn't find it and have time. Um, and you go say, Brother Ron, it's truthful. Well, if it's biblical, it's true, correct? But 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 let me read what the Bible says um, uh, about this important issue, um, and 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 so, and and I'm pretty sure I read this in Peter's day. Knowing this, Second Peter, chapter three, verse three. Knowing this, that the at the last day scoffers will come, walk in their own lust, and here's what they'll be saying: Where's the promise of his coming? Mm-hmm. He's not coming. Mm-hmm. No, nothing's changed. People die. People live. Just, everything's just continuing as is. Well, well, Peter wrote in the first century, guys, you're losing hope. You're losing hope because he wasn't coming back when they expected. And and so they were panicking a little bit. They, they were saying, hey, hey, he promised he's coming now. Where is he at? And Peter said, and, and by the way, I, did, I didn't finish that. L- listen to this. And the Bible says this, and he's not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. Aren't you glad mm-hmm. if he said it? In his time, he will do it. So in Revelation twenty two twenty, we have the promise that the Lord said, I am coming back. Hey, there's a second word here, and that word is I. Personal pronoun, I. What's that? Well, not only do we see the promise of his coming, but we see who is coming, the person of his coming. Um, matter of fact, um, you can turn or listen. I'm, I'm very, Revelation 1, 7. Listen to this. Behold, he's coming, Revelation 1, 7, with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth were mourned because of him. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end, who was, who is to come. So we see the person of his coming. Jesus said, I'm coming back personally. Now, now, don't you think with me just a moment. Jesus could send angels. It's not what he said. Jesus could send the prophets. Not what he said. Jesus could send the apostles. Not what he said. Jesus said, first that's on, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Did you think about that for just a moment? That's how significant this is. Uh, I had to run some stuff to Judy down to Jonathan Johnson's pack, uh, I was to say package store. <laughs> well, I guess it is a package. We used to call it beer joint package store. Young people, what? Anyhow. Uh, so I had a package <clears throat> And this lady came running frantically. Hey, 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 where's my package? And, and the girl behind the desk said, what, what package? She said, well, the, the FedEx driver said he dropped my package off here and I could come pick it up here. I'm from Florence. And, and she said, ma'am, I don't know anything about a package. She said, well, he told me to meet him here. This is blah, blah, blah. And boy, she would, you could tell she's fr- I got to have that today. I've got to have it today. I can't wait till tomorrow. He told me to come here. And, and, and she said, well, ma'am, I'm sorry. I, I, she looked around, pretended to look, whatever. She came in and said, ma'am, there's not a package here. Aren't you glad the Lord? I want you to think about this for just a moment. He's not going to lose his package. He's not going to lose his bride. not going to misplace us. 
at the appointed time, at the right time, those of us who are waiting for the redemption of the body, the Lord himself will come. So ladies, I want you to just think something with me first for a moment. Let's say you're in church, you're getting ready to get married, and the door's open, dun, 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 and there's the best man standing up there. Husband's sitting over there. Hey, just, he'll be, he'll, would y'all be okay with that? Probably not. <laughs> and just, he, he can fill in for me. No, the Lord loves you so much. He, this is important. He doesn't trust you in the care of anybody else. And that's why he said personal pronoun, surely I. Matter of fact, if you go read all three of those, each one he uses the first person pronoun, I, I, I am coming. So we see the promise, but the person is coming. Uh, Revelation 1 verse 7 says, number one, you will see him. You won't see a, and I've had a lot of delegations come after me. <laughs> I've had some deacons come, you know, but this time Jesus is coming for me personally. I want you to think about that. We will see him. That's what the scripture says in his coming. Hey, this is important, and I, and I don't have time to, to flesh all these out. Not only will you see him, but the Bible says you will know him. The word see in the Greek there indicates that when you see him, you're going to recognize who they are. Um, I, I, I can't remember what I've told, what, what I have told, but my, my uh, 12th grade teacher who did the study hall was Miss Hudson. She was Elvis Presley's first cousin, and uh, they were dear buddies. According to her. And she said, it was not uncommon for me <clears throat> on Friday afternoon, 17 year old girl, my mom would drive me and drop me off at Graceland. I would put on a mask, a, a helmet, and he would put on a helmet and he would ride me all over Memphis. And we'd be getting burgers sitting next to people and nobody knew it was us. <laughs> she said, we did it all the time. He, he loved my family. We, 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 and Elvis was a very family oriented guy, if you know anything about him. He said, so it was not uncommon for me to a seven-year-old girl be on the back seat of the motorcycle, and it's Elvis Presley, and we're going to the, we go down places. We wouldn't put our helmets off and said, we'd be standing right next to you in line, and you would never know. There we were. How many times? We did it all the time. Well, I'm glad when I see Jesus this time, I'm not going to have to figure out who he is. You're going to know who he is. You're going to know him. You're going to see him. You're going to know him. That's important. Um, I mean, you don't know I like Auburn football. Many of you wouldn't remember Damian Craig, football quarterback at Auburn for several years. Uh, I used to go to the Blue-Gray game every year in Montgomery, every year. We'd go down at Christmas time, Crampton Bowl, and you'd see players from all over America play. And Damian had graduated and had tried out in the pros. And so I'm sitting there by myself. Josh is with me, but he's off a little kid running around. And Damian had a squeaky little girl's voice. And I heard somebody go, hey there, how you doing? And I looked at I said, that's Damian Craig. He said, you're stupid. I said, trust me, that's Damian Craig. I can tell the voice. I'd heard him on TV. Just, I didn't turn around. I said, that's Damian Craig. And so a few minutes, I pretended like I had to go get a Coke. <laughs> and so I turned around and I said, hey, you Damian Craig? And, and I, I didn't want to cause him any problems, you know, because as soon as I did, it come 400 people. And I said, I'm sorry. I, I just, well, you, you, I just want to meet you. Um, listen, you're not going to have to guess. You're not going to have to wonder. You're not going to have to pick him out of the lineup. Who is he? The Bible says he's coming to you personally. Hey, here's the third one. This is good. Not only will you see him and know him, you're going to get to go with him. But the Lord himself shall send him here with a shout, before start the trumpet of God. I'm doing this fast. Then Christ will rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the promise of his coming, the Lord himself, will descend from heaven. Or shall. Hey, um, I've had this sad misfortune several times going to people's homes. And knock on the door and say, man, I'm so sorry to tell you that your family member didn't make it. Uh, guys, that's, that's just, and you know what the first thing, I want to see them. I, said, I, I remember the day Donna Johnson, I picked up Jeremy from Brooks High School and Ken Johnson was told to go immediately to Birmingham. He had to have open heart surgery. The doctor told him, don't even go home, Dr. Bob Becky. I believe I'm right, Miss Donna, and scared us to death. Scared me. Man, it didn't scare y'all. Scared me. And she asked what I get with Jeremy. And I checked Jeremy. What's wrong? First thing. What's wrong? Wow. Aren't you glad when the Lord comes? You're going to see him and you're going to know him. And thank God we're going to get to go be with him. Amen? So I, I just want to make this where you understand, man, the coming of the Lord for us is going to be a celebration because we're the bride. We're the beloved. Hey, number three. And, and, and i got to move through this one quickly. This is where it's going to get kind of 
if I'm not careful. But, but note he says, surely I am coming. So surely is a promise. I as a person coming is the plan. All through scripture, number A, if you look in under number three is the plan of his coming. Number A are the details. Some will give you some scripture. Matthew 24. We, we don't have time to read those. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Corinthians 15. All give details about the coming of the Lord. And let me just read just a couple of these just, just for you. Jesus gives what we call the Olivet Discourse. And, and I want you to listen to this for a moment. So Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, Do you not know all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone will be left upon another. Now, that's a prophecy. Jesus is telling them the temple that you see is going to be destroyed. But he's also talking about himself. What do you mean? Well, Titus the Legion in A.D. 91 marched into Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. But he also said in another place, it's going to be torn down. Three days, going to raise it back up. How are you going, how are you going to build a new temple? In one place they said, you know how long it took Solomon to build the temple? And you're going to build it in three days? How can you do that? Wow, that, that's pretty good. Yes, he did, Brother Ken. Now, look what he said. Now, as they said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him and said, tell us when these things will be. And what will be the sign of your coming? And here it is. And what will be the end of the age? Well, if I do that answer, I could make a lot of money. Go on all TV shows. Um... I, I, well, I don't know if I would or not. <laughs> I, I, uh, I listened to a preacher on the view today. Mm, I think I just don't think I'd have went. Uh, there, the Bible gives a lot of details about his coming. Now remember, uh, as a pastor, I believe in the rapture. That's the secret coming, when the Lord comes just for the church. 1 Thessalonians 4, Revelation chapter 5. That's my, now, I'm okay. I talked to a dear friend of mine yesterday. He's historical Post. He, he doesn't believe in the rapture. He believes that all things are going to work out. All this is going to happen. Then the Lord will end the work. That, that, he has the right to be wrong. <laughs> Y'all all right with that? Amen. I don't, I'm not going to stay here. He, he can stay if he wants to is what I told him. But the Bible gives a lot of detail, so many, that how long have I been preaching the book of Revelation? The details are too many. There's no way to get them all. And again, nobody believes everything just the same, and that's okay. But number two is this. The Bible gives a description of when he comes. Jude said, I saw him coming with 10,000 times 10,000 of his saints. Armies. By, army. by the way, I need to apologize. I believe I got the number wrong Sunday. I said 2 million men army. It's a 200 million men army. I think, mm -hmm. am I right? Yes. I think I apologize for that. I went back and listened to that. I was trying to pick up where I left off. And I said, 2 million? That's 200 million. So there's the details. And I gave you Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Corinthians 5, but then there's that description, Revelation 1, 7, and every eye will see him. And so I, I remember Smarlet said one time, well, if you're in China and you're not here, how can everybody see him at the same time? He's God. He can do what he wants. <clears throat> I mean, he's big enough to fill up the whole universe. I, I never get tired of telling a cute little story. A um, guy went to biology 101 first day. And the professor was just dogging Christians. And he said, you know, if God's real, he made this big universe and put all those stars out there and did all this. He said, why did God go to all that trouble? And the guy raised his hand. He said, wasn't no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No trouble at all. So the plan are, are all the many, many details. And, and uh, let me say to you, and I would recommend some books to you. Number one, I would recommend David Jeremiah, uh, The Agents of the Apocalypse. And it, it just gets so many details. It's hard to, in a setting like this just to give everything. Uh, the description is, hey, number C, I want to go back to Revelation 20. Notice the desire of his coming. Look what John said. Even so come, Lord. Sunday, as I left the pulpit and going out the door, two people come and said, Brother Ronnie, um, I wish the Lord would come back today. She said, I've just got so many situations in my life. I'm tired. And if the Lord would come back today, it would be a good thing. I wish he'd come back today. Not tonight. Today. Listen to what John said. Even so come, Lord. Uh, I remember witnessing to a guy. And um, 
Well, this, this was, and I've never heard this response before in my life. Um, he was working on when we was doing the old church, rebuilding this and stuff. He said, Brother Ronnie, I'm saved. But he said, since I've been saved, I've lived such a wicked life. And then he said this. He said, I wish God would just kill me the first day he saved me. Jeez. I just wish he'd took me on home because I've messed up so many times. Everybody feel like that? So, Lord, just come on back. Today's a good day to come home, to go home. All right? So the plan of his coming, I, I, um, again, we're going through that on Sundays. And, and you have enough, or I've given enough notes to fill up the book. Uh, the description is the whole world will see him, but there's a doubt. Hey, then the period, real quickly. How are we doing on time, guys? Are we doing okay? So, uh, oh, wow, we're doing good. Yeah. And, and then he gives the period. Now, remember, three times he said, surely I come. And each time, he put with it a period of time. Surely I come quickly. And the word literally um, in the Greek is suddenly without delay. Now, let, let, let me show the differences here. There's two, two thoughts there. Number one, I, I don't, we kind of, we kind of get that confusing about the quickly we think, well, he's going to come back tomorrow. That's not what he's saying. He said, when I come back, it's going to be so fast. It'll be so quick. You won't have time running hide. You won't have time to get saved. It'll happen instantaneously. Somebody has said that in first Corinthians, when he said that the Lord will just send from, you know, in the moment that it's literally in the twinkling of an eye, as fast as you can blink your eye. You ever blink and not know it? Sure. You blink thousands of times a day. You never even know you blink. Why? You blink so fast. Uh, and, and here's what he's saying. The period is this, that when he does come, it will be so quick. Now, we can talk about the other. How, 2021, and he left here in AD, you know, we believe 33. We can talk about both of those, but I'm talking about the one <clears throat> that when he decides to come, it will be so fast that you will not have time to do anything. Matthew 24 says two people will be on the house. One will be taken, one will be left. Two people will be out and feel grinded. One will be, it'll be so quick, you won't even have time to run home and tell anybody. So think about that, the period of his coming. Three times he reminds them that he's coming personally, but that the, it, will take, it will happen so fast that you will not have time to get ready. And, and, and I think uh, the, the, the more I read, uh, Paul said in Romans 13, matter of fact, uh, turn to Romans 13. Let, let's, and I'm pulling this out of the memory bank, so if I get it wrong, y'all forgive me, okay? I had memorized all the Bible, just most of it. So, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and if you believe that, let me see if I can find this real quick. Right? Romans 13. Romans 13. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Romans 13, 11. Romans 13, 11. So, there is a, Jesus gave a description of his coming, and he said it'll be so fast, it'll be so quick. So um, uh, I was watching a thing the other day. Um, they say when the nuclear bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, that, that there was, I, don't, I can't remember how many miles, it was just devastated. Trees mowed down, houses falling in, people dying. But it happened so fast. When um, the great uh, volcano, what was that in the past? Mishibius. They literally found a mother uh, and they have it, if you go over there, if you go to the right place, they have a mother holding her baby in her arms. She ran to the corner of the house, and the volcano lava covered them so fast that it literally entombed them alive. That's how fast it took place. So nature can be fast. I mean, it really, uh, tornadoes, you think about how bad that is. Well, listen to what he says about this in reference to the time, the period. Uh, Romans thirteen eleven, And do this, knowing the time, there it is, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we, we first believed. And notice what he says. The night is what? Far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the light. Let us walk properly in the day, but in re not in reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, strife of life. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and not make no provisions for the flesh. So we, we're looking at both of those. He said, looks at the night's far spent. The time is at hand. Cast off the works of darkness. Wake up out of your sleep. Salvation is nearer than when we first begun. Man, Paul's reminding us that the Lord's coming will come. And when it does, it'll be, 
Uh, number eight, it'll be quickly. It, it, there's just no other way to say that. Uh, it will be so fast. Number B there, and, and all I did, I'm giving you the group, it's just without delay, literally without delay. Um, watch tomorrow, I'll get hit, but people say they get hit by trains every day. You ever seen how many people get hit every day? Do you know how big a train is? Can they not see it? You don't say what most people think? They think they can outrun it. Most people hit by a train think they can outrun it. They have time. They have plenty of time. And they'll go through the bar and boom. And so many people are killed and, and hit because they think that they can outrun the train. They have time. Well, the Bible says the day is far spent. It's nighttime. It's close. So here's what I'm going to do. For the next few minutes, turn to 1 Corinthians 15. I want to show you the last one. And, and, and I just put two words, finally here. Romans 8. It's finally here. First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians, Paul uh, is disputing a heresy in First Corinthians 15, and that is that there is no resurrection. Uh, a lot of even the Christians have, have come to the place where they said, hey, there's no resurrection. And Paul said, and we don't have time to go back and do it, but Paul said, man, we're of all people most miserable if, if there's no resurrection. You know what he literally says? He said that because we have believed the gospel, we've been duped. We're stupid. That's what he literally says. Matter of fact, uh, if you take Paul's biography, many of the Roman officials thought Paul lost his mind. Agrippa? Remember what Agrippa said? Paul, did you look? Felix, I'm, excuse me. Paul, have you lost your mind? You gave up all of this to go preach that some guy died and raised? Are you crazy? Remember what he said? I have not lost my mind. He argued for his mental stability. They said, you crazy. By the way, you believe the Bible a lot and people tell you you're weird. They, they really will. Um, I played tennis last night, and, and there was a guy just kept bragging about his lewd, lascivious life. And I said, man, you just need to get saved. Bragging and just, you know, you know just stupid locker in, in anyhow. And I said, man, is, is that the only thing you live for? Is that what life is about to you? And hmm, just, It just breaks your heart to see that people live in such a way that they don't even realize that one day they're going to stand before God for that. So Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 is arguing. I need you get this now. He's actually debating like a lawyer in a court case for the resurrection. How can some of you say there's no resurrection? Uh, verse 12. Now if Christ be, is preached that he has not been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there's no resurrection? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is in vain. You know what he's saying? Your head's empty. Your dummies. But he goes, and but so he argues it. But verse 20, but now Christ has been risen. So with that in mind, let's read this final event in 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Listen to this. Now this I say, brethren. So remember back up uh, number two. He, uh, in the morning, he calls you the bride, the beloved, the what? The brethren. So finally, brethren, know this, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And so now here's what he's going to do. He's going to reveal a mystery. Behold, I show you or tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, transformed, literally. Now go back to Romans 8. Remember what he said? We're groaning for what? The redemption of the body. God's going to redeem your body. Um, um, I, I was at the Brooks ball game the other day, and a little teenage girl was picking gray hairs out of her mama's head. It was kind of, it was kind of comical. And uh, her mom said, "Quit! It's embarrassing." So, "Mama, you got these gray hairs." You said, "Out!" Uh, it was kind of funny. Well, you live long enough; it's gonna happen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, and nothing, anything to do about. It. I'm trying to figure out how to comb my hair. I can't comb it back over. It just it won't lay down. So I'm just gonna get it shaved off. I, I don't know. Um, but aren't you glad that one day God's going to change these bodies? Mm -hmm. Think about that for just a moment. So he said, we won't be asleep. The word sleep, there's a euphemism for dead. He said, we're going to be changed. Little, little metamorphosis. Now what's going to happen? Here it is. In a moment, in the what? In the twink of an eye. And then he says, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. So the first thing's going to happen when the trumpet blows is the dead will be raised. And then those of us who are alive, we will be changed. 
the mortal will put on immortality. The corruptible, the fading away, will put on incorruption. So look what he says. For the corruption must put on incorruption. And I'm, I've got a point here, so y'all stay with me. Just a few more minutes. The corruptible must put on incorruption. The mortal must put on immortality. So when this happens, the corruptible has put on incorruption. The mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying. I want you to listen to this. Death is swallowed up in victory. Wow. Jesus is Lord. Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Now, look what he says. But we give thanks to God who gives us the victory. Now, here's what he's saying in context. Victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That's why I said, finally here. When the trumpet sounds, thank God. Hey, uh, I've, I've heard two different stories. I've heard that it's in New England. I've also... Hey, Miss Tammy Hanna, I've also heard this in North Mississippi. There was a guy by the name of Mr. Pease, P-A-S. He was a great believer. And again, I've heard uh, two or three different renditions of this. But he died, and on his tombstone, here's what they put. This ain't the peas, it's just the pod. Because the peas shelled out and went to God. <laughs> Amen? Um, so I just want to say to you tonight, as, as we walk through this difficult, dark world, it can be very difficult. It can. Um, talk with somebody last week, and just, just they're just in a mess, and their life is upside down and backwards, and 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 you, and you think, man, how how's this going to work out? I, I certainly can't fix it. Only the Lord can. And and they said, you know what? I, I just wish the Lord would come back. I said, I, I know, but you can't count on that to fix everything. You got to live that day. You got to get up, and go in the morning. You got children, right? And. Uh, so I just want to say to you, I'm glad that he is coming. Right. One day. Seen, finally here. 1 Corinthians 15. And death is swallowed up. Say again. Number two, the D of his coming. Uh, person. The person of his coming. Surely I. Jesus is coming back himself. Thank you. So we have this hope. That's what the Bible calls it. The hope. The blessed hope. Whatever, whatever phrase you want to put in there, the blessed hope of the Lord, we have it today, okay? So he's coming. The good news is he is coming. The question that we have to ask is, are we prepared and are we ready? And each piece is just a pod because the peace shelled out and done went to God. Amen? Hey, aren't you glad we got somewhere to go? You ever thought about that? I'm, I'm glad. I'm thankful. I got somewhere to go. I got somebody to meet. Uh, more, you know, I won't see my family, but I got somebody more important than that. Say the Lord. Amen. Hey, we pray for a lot of people. We're fixing to pray for everybody in just a moment. So uh, as we pray tonight, let's remember, uh, and I'm going to call these families out again. Please remember the Boyd family and the death of Stanley. Please remember the Burks family and the death of Jamie. Please remember the Kirkendall and the death of Jim. Please remember the McCain family and the death of Gwen. And then, of course, the Vaughn family and the death of Mr. Mike. So please ask the Lord to be with all these families who are going through the valley of the shadow of death, that God would give them grace, okay? All right. Father, we love you and we thank you that, God, you've been faithful. And Lord, in all of the mess that we live in today and all, all the stuff that just, that God just we just wish it would stop, but we know it's not. So we pray for that day when the Lord himself would descend from heaven. And God, all the stuff that we're going through, all the heartache and all the, the difficulties Paul said in Romans 8, won't even be comparable to the glory that God's going to reveal in us. Wow, what a day that's going to be. But Lord, till then, help us remain faithful and fruitful. We've named all the people on the list that God, uh, who are going through tough times, and then those who've lost loved ones. You know the names and you know the needs, and we ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, to touch their lives. Bless them. And Father, I pray you'd give them your eternal hope because they know you. So, Lord, when we die, we don't lose. When we die, we're not lost. We're in the safekeeping of the sovereignty of God. So, Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. And all the saints said, amen. amen. Good to have you guys online. Bless you all. Bless you. Hey, Greg Duncan.